Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Divya Madan here. In the last video, we have discussed about the glial cells. So continuing with the nerve physiology, in this video, we are going to discuss about neurons, their structure, types of neurons, and how they, along with the glial cells, neurons along with the glial cells in the blood capillaries, they form a functional unit of the CNS. So most of the uh, neurons in the mammals they are in various different uh, shapes and sizes and mostly they have the same parts so we are going to here discuss a uh, shape or parts of a typical spinal motor neuron that is given in this beautiful diagram you can see there is a cell body or soma that is known as the metabolic center it has nucleus and mitochondria it has various projections projecting out of it these are known as dendrites that arborize or branch out and they form a knobs that are receptors or receiving end. There is a fibrous filament extension from the body that is known as exon. The point where this exon is projecting out is thickened and is known as exon hillock. The initial segment of the exon is really important for the generation of uh, action potential. The exon Throughout its length is covered by myelin. The Schwann cell is responsible for myelination as we have discussed in the previous video. Schwann cell is one of the uh, microglia that are involved in the myelination of the peripheral nervous system. And when it comes to central nervous system, myelination is done by oligodendrocytes. Right? So these Schwann cells, they twirl around or wrap around the exons and they form this myelin. And in between the ends where the myelination is not there. These are known as nodes of Ranvier. These are one microma in length and they are separated about 1 mm from each other. So, uh, this whole exon, for the sake of uh, understanding, has been divided into four functional parts, four important functional zones. So, these four important functional zones, first one is the receptor end. This receptor end is the dendritic zone where multiple local potential changes are generated and carried away. The second site is the site where the action potentials are generated. These are the initial segment of the exon and when it comes to cutaneous uh, sensory neurons, these are generated in the first node of Ranvier. The third is the exonal process that transmits these action potential. And the last is the nerve endings or the terminal boutons that further propagated or transmitted to the postsynaptic zone. So the four functional zones would be the receptor area, that is the dendritic area that will uh, catch up or generate the multiple local action potential. The second is the area where the action potential that has to be transmitted is generated. These are the initial segment of the exon. Or in case of cutaneous sensory neurons, these are generated in the first node of Ranvier. And lastly, these are the terminal botons where the action potential causes the release of the synaptic transmitters. Okay. Now, they are the exons or are no neurons. They are divided based upon uh, their processes that are projecting out of them. Uh, these can be unipolar, bipolar, pseudo-unipolar or multipolar. The unipolar cells, they will have a single one. And they, they will have a one process that is projecting out of them and the single process will act as both the receiving end as well as the releasing end. Okay, the second is the bipolar cell. These bipolar cell, as the name says, bi, it will have two processes. There will be two specialized processes. One would be the dendritic process that will receive the information. And other is the exon process that will transmit the information further from the cell body. The third type of cell is pseudo-unipolar cell. It has a single projection projecting out of the cell body that further branch out. One would go out, one is the central exon that will go, that further forms the exon terminals. And other will go towards peripheral exon to the skin and muscle. Right? The third type of uh, neuron that is the most common neuron is the multipolar cells. These multipolar cells will have multiple projections. That is they will have multiple dendritic processes and a single exon. 
this can be seen in the motor neuron of the spinal cord this can be the pyramidal cells of the hippocampus or they can be purkinje cells of the cerebellum you can see that there are multiple dendritic processes and a single exon okay so we have discussed about the basic structure we have seen that the schwann cells form the myelin around it it is important to note that the schwann cells they actually twirl around the peripheral nerves as we have seen in the previous video and then they form the myelin and this twirling around the uh, exon they will bind to a protein on the extracellular surface of the neuron that is known as p0 protein this p0 protein is really important because mutations in this p0 protein is responsible for various peripheral neuropathies okay and the role of myelin is well known in the conduction they form an insulating layer and really important for the conduction a uh, very interesting demyelinating diseases clinical box is given here which i am going to discuss here and then wrap up this video demyelinating diseases we know that uh, myelin is really important for the conduction of uh, the information in the neurons by acting as an insulating layer and any damage to this myelin will cause uh, obviously any disturbance uh, in the conduction right so uh, what happens in demyelinating diseases one of them is mentioned here that is ms multiple sclerosis this disease is an autoimmune disease where the immune cells in the antibodies are formed against uh, myelin in our central nervous system so causing destruction of the myelin and further destruction of the neurons they will cause problems in the conduction pathways right the most common symptoms of the first symptom uh, that is seen as paraparesis that is weakness in the bilateral lower limbs also other symptoms like optic neuritis dysarthrias dysphagia can be seen depending upon the course of the disease they are divided into uh, three types or three forms relapsing remitting primary progressive secondary progressive so these can be remembered by simple diagrams first uh, here mentioned is relapsing remitting this relapsing remitting type can be easily remembered by the help of this line diagram what happens to relapsing remitting type there are transit episodes that will appear so i will show the these episodes by marking right so transient episodes will appear and it's not working sorry so transient episode will appear then it will disappear then it will stay silent for some time then another episode will appear that will gradually disappear it will stay silent for some time but you know that subsequent episodes that can appear a year later but eventually full recovery won't happen you can see the baseline shifting up right so these are relapsing remitting type the second is primary progressive where there are no episodes the disease just progresses over the time the other is secondary progressive there is steadily there is worsening but you can see little little remissions in between this is secondary progressive Okay, so the diagnosis of this disease, multiple sclerosis, is not really readily easily made because you need that there should be various episodes that are separated in time and space. Nerve conduction studies are done that will show slowing of the conduction because myelin is damaged here. Also, MRI will show plaques or sclerotic areas wherever there is damage, right? So this is the most definitive assessment. You will see on MRI there will be multiple scarred sclerotic areas of plaques in the brain. These therapeutic highlights are also given in Ginong, and these are really important because many a times questions are made, and whenever you read pharmacology, also these newer drugs are mentioned here and there, and these are frequently asked in INICT and APJ exams also. Uh, so, the therapeutic highlights here uh, are given. First of all, you know that. multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease and there is no cure as such but we can obviously slow down the disease process by acting or suppressing the immune system so corticosteroids are the most common treatment that are used apart from that uh, injections of beta interferons they are known to reduce the severity and slow the progression of the disease glatamer acetate that also decreases the action of the immune system on myelin and tarizumab is one of the monoclonal antibody that will 
stop the immune cells to migrate from the blood to the CNS right so by stopping their transfer they will further decrease the attack another clinical trial of therapy with rituximab is given rituximab is anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody right and this is known to slow the progression of uh, many primary progressive type right we have discussed this primary progressive type the toximab is shown to slow the progression in that case. Another drug, fingolimod. This fingolimod, like natalizumab, we have discussed. Right? In natalizumab, it was slowing the progression of uh, the transfer of cells from the blood to the CNS. Similarly, fingolimod, it uh, stops the progression of the relapsing rheumatic type of MS by sequestering this lymphocytes and the lymph nodes and limiting their access to the CNS. So uh, that's all about MS and the basic structure of the neuron. In the next video, we will uh, be discussing axonal transport and excitation of conduction. I hope this video is helpful and we'll meet next time in another video completing the nerve physiology. Bye-bye. Um,